What's going on engineers? In this video we're going to talk about Linux nice and priority values of running processes. First we're going to chat a little bit about why it's necessary to set priority values for a process anyways. Basically a computer or server is made up of one or more CPUs and each CPU is made up of one or more cores and each core is made up of one or more threads. Basically each core of each CPU can do exactly one thing at a time. If it needs to do two things it needs to jump back and forth between the two things to work them both at the same time. If you have one CPU and that CPU has four cores, then that means your machine can do exactly four things in parallel at the same time. Now the line is kind of blurred between parallel and concurrent processing. It's just that CPUs are so fast these days that you can go back in between things like watching a movie or processing something in your editor or opening a Chrome tab or a new email coming in. It can bounce back between those really fast and it can give the appearance of doing say a hundred things in parallel but in reality if you have four cores it can only do four things in parallel it's just jumping between them really fast it's a process called context switching now adjusting the priority of a running process is really really useful if that process is really cpu intensive like if that process is going to use one two or even three cores of processing power at 100 percent and speaking about like high level use cases of processes, not all processes need to have the same priority. For instance, a process that is accomplishing a, say, hourly backup could use less processing power than an operation like, say, updating financial data, things that need to happen immediately and need to use the most amount of processing power that a computer can supply. So let's jump in and look at some practical examples here. So first I have a script here, it's called spin.sh, and it's nothing more than an infinite loop that's going to consume 100% of one core of one CPU. We'll use this script to simulate actual load. The next thing is we're going to use Docker to start a Docker container that we're going to run spin.sh in. And the reason we're going to use Docker is because I'm able to limit the container to exactly one CPU. That way we can force it to prioritize the different processes rather than running it on different cores. Because, of course, I have a six-core processor, which means that I can run six spin.sh files all at 100%, assuming that nothing else on my machine was using any resources. So using Docker will just let me control this a little closer. This is not a Docker tutorial. If you want to just copy and paste this into your terminal, it will log you into a running container that's using exactly one core. So I'll just come over here to our first terminal and run container.sh, and this will log me into the Docker container. I have a second terminal here, which I'm going to use to open just a separate separate terminal into that particular Docker container. So I'll do bin bash. So now I have two terminals that are in this container that I can use to do some work. So in this first terminal, I'm going to start top, and I'm going to set it to 0.2 or 0.3 so it updates fast. And this will let us actually look at the process that are running, and it'll look at how much CPU they are consuming and it'll let us look at the priority and nice values. So let's go ahead and start up the actual spin script and put some load on this machine. So we got 100% CPU on exactly one core. Now before we go any further, I want to actually talk about the priority and nice values here. So you can see that this particular script right here it has a priority value of 20 and a nice value of 0. So the nice value is going to be a value that you as a user in user space can modify and has a range of values between negative 20 and positive 19. The lower the nice value, the higher the priority. Now it's worth mentioning that only a root user can set a negative value indicating a higher priority. So as a normal user, you can set a nice value between 0 and 19. As a root user, you could set a nice value of between negative 20 and 19. By default, processes started with a zero nice value. Now the priority value is going to be the value that the kernel sees a current process at that given moment. Unless the kernel decides otherwise, or use a command like chrt to set the task scheduling, you know, fine tuning task scheduling details, the priority can be computed as 20 plus the nice value. It's also worth knowing at this point that the nice value is somewhat of a hint to the kernel, most of the time, the kernel will obey the nice value, and if you set a nice value, it will either raise or lower the priority according to the nice value set. However, in times of extreme load, lots of process, or something like that, the kernel is free to ignore that nice value and set a priority as something different. So that would be a case where you would see a priority value that doesn't fit that formula of PR equals 20 plus the nice value. 
So up to this point, we've only had one command running, so let's start a few more. We're just going to start them in the background. So we'll do one, two, three, four. We'll start four up, and you can see that each one of these processes is using about 25% CPU. And you can see that they all have the same priority and nice value, a priority of 20 and a nice value of zero. So of course, next thing we're going to look at is how to modify this nice value to change the priority for what the CPU should work on more. And to do this, it's two different commands. It's going to be nice and renice. The nice command is going to be used before a process is started. You can use the nice command in front of another command that will start that particular process at a particular nice value. If you just do nice and then the command, it's going to start it of a nice value of 10. So it's going to start as, you know, being quite nice. However, you can specify a specific nice value by using the dash n option. So here I've supplied a 2, which means it's going to start it with a nice value of 2. Keep in mind that you can also do negative 2, but you need to be a root user to start that as a negative 2. So let's start some processes with specific nice values. So the first thing I'm going to do is just stop all these processes that are running, and then we'll do nice dash n 2 and then we'll start spin.sh. You can see now this has a priority of 22 and a nice value of 2. Because it's the only process running, it gets 100% CPU anyways. But now let's start three more processes. So we'll start a second one with a nice value of 4. We'll start another one with a nice value of, say, 7. And then we'll start one with a value of negative 2. So now you can see the CPU usage is kind of all over the place. The one with a nice value of negative 2 is getting 55, 56% of the CPU, whereas the one with a nice value of 7 is only getting, say, 6 to 10% of the CPU. So now that we have running processes, all of them with a different nice value, let's go ahead and actually modify the nice value of running processes. To do this, we use the renice command. Renice has a similar signature as nice, which is to say that it has the dash n option, and you specify a value you want to change that process nice value to, but rather than specifying the command, you specify dash p, and then specify the pid. So we'll come back here, and we'll modify some values here. So we'll raise pid 40 up to a nice value of 1. So we'll do renice dash n 1 dash p 40. You can see it changes it to 1. So let's also modify 38 to 3 and 39 to 4. So do renice dash n 3 p 38. And then we'll do a nice value of 4 for process ID 39. Another useful feature of renice is you're able to actually modify all running processes for a given user and set them to a specific nice value. This is good if you have a group of processes running as one user that are maybe taking up way too much CPU. You can simply do renice dash n and then specify the value and then just do dash u and specify the user and that'll raise the nice value and thus lower the priority for all the processes for that one user. The last thing I want to do is just gradually raise the priority for one process until we reach almost the max priority. So we'll start by doing renice. We'll do like negative eight to start. You can see when I did negative 8, now this gets about 75% of the CPU, and the rest is getting between 6 and 10, which is really not that much. So let's just keep raising it and see what happens. So negative 8, we'll say it's like negative 14. You know, now we're up to 93% CPU. You know, we could say it to 17. We're up to almost 100% CPU. And if I go any higher, I do like negative 19. So now we're at maximum priority and it's using almost 100% CPU, and there's certain processes that aren't actually able to really execute anything. It's only getting a little bit of CPU every now and again. Actually, got one more. We can go to negative 20, and that'll be at max. So now we're at maximum, maximum priority for that one process. The reason I wanted to show this is this, of course, can be very dangerous to your system. You know, this could cause system instability because now it's dedicating all of its resources pretty much to that one process and that can make other portions of your, of your system unstable by not giving it the kind of resources it needs. So be very, very careful with nice values such as negative 20. Now with that said, I don't necessarily mean to avoid negative 20 nice value. It's just to say that when a process is using a lot of CPU or you know it's gonna be maxing out the CPU using a nice value of negative 20, you know, I would caution you on that. However, there are plenty of valid times where you would use it, and that would be such as a process where 
It doesn't really need that much CPU. However, you know that when it needs CPU, it needs to get the CPU immediately, all of it, and without delay. That'd be a good option for a nice value of negative 20. And we're done. That's Linux priority and nice values. Hopefully everybody learned something today. It's a very useful command if you need to make a process either consume more CPU because it's important or make a process consume only a little bit of CPU whenever the system has time to execute it. You know, this is a good command for that. You know, of course, computers and servers become more and more powerful every day, but you are going to come across situations that you're working in a, a less, you know, resource large environment and then it's going to be necessary to very specifically prioritize your processes. As usual, if you have any questions about anything I said in this video, leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Otherwise, I will see you on the next video.